and welcome. We're going to be looking at ABC. My name is Sandy Hood and uh, you can contact me at my email address or look at my Facebook uh, information. This particular question is taken from the Kaplan exam kit. It's page 135, the Jola Publishing Company. Although, if you haven't got the book, you can still, if you put in Jola Publishing Company, you can it will come up on the internet and you will be able to see a copy of the question. Um, I think the, the best way to start is by uh, reading the questions. Um, I think step one, looking at the questions rather than looking at the data is going to help us because it's going to just save us time when we're going through the details. The, the questions tell us that A requires an explanation as to why the overhead allocations have changed in the way indicated above. And then there's some further data for B and then you're asked to calculate the cost per unit and the margin for the two products using machine hours to absorb the overheads and then do the same again for the two products using activity-based costing principles to absorb the overheads. Now, I think it's key points to look at here are the word explain. Explain is key here. Explain why the overhead allocations have changed. And also this idea that it's the allocations in the question. So they're not looking for a textbook generalization. They want something which is quite specific to product CB and TJ. Right, so I'm looking for clues. I'm on the lookout for the CB production causing more activities to take place than TJ. And the reason for that is because we know that the CB activity-based costing overhead is higher than the TJ one. And typically a high volume production tends to have lower overhead cost under ABC than absorption costing. Okay, here's the, the, the data. You can stop the tape and you can read this yourself. And I've identified that uh, there's only going to be four production runs for the CB. That should lower the, um, the overhead cost because there's, there's a smaller number of production runs. But they've got frequent government inspections. Now, that's likely to mean that they're going to have higher uh, quality costs. And then the the technical journal, TJ, is produced in monthly production runs. So that would be more production runs. So we would expect more setup costs as far as the TJ is concerned. Not subject to governmental controls. So we would expect fewer uh, costs to be allocated using the, the the quality cost area and that they, they use far more machine hours so we would expect to see perhaps um, a, a fall from that I think in this case it actually t turns out to be a bit irrelevant here's the here's the data you can see that the two have got um, exactly the same margin uh, one selling for nine dollars and five cents, the other one for thirteen dollars eighty-five cents, and the, we, we can see the respective costs. Overheads are two thirty for the CB and three ninety-five for the TJ. And then we're giving some very useful information. The overheads are given a breakdown in terms of the percentage of the total overhead, and they're also given what the activity drivers would be. And here's the key information that we are really researching. The overhead allocation for the CB would be five cents higher at two dollars thirty-five, whereas the overhead allocated to TJ would be thirty cents lower at three dollars sixty-five. Now we can note from this that if we were previously using an absorption basis using machine hours, then for 75% of the total overhead aren't going to change. Um, and that's most of our overhead costs, isn't it? There's only 25% left. But the 25% that are left, we can see there's going to be an increase as far as the uh, CB is concerned because there's a larger number of inspections and with the production setup costs, there's going to be an increase uh, as far as the trade journals are concerned. So we need to structure our answer. We need to use some headings. 
These would be ideal headings. Just do it based on the information we've been given. Property costs, quality costs, and production setup costs. That helps us to structure the answer. And then we need a fourth one, which we, we can show the, the relative value. You, we, we need to be able to prioritize where the, the causes have come from. So we, we're going to identify which one is the most important within those areas. And this is the key reason why. The why are those overhead allocations different between the absorption approach and the ABC approach. Here are four headings. Here are now our paragraph answers, property costs, the driver for property costs is machine hours, current absorption costing approach is based on machine hours. In the area of property costs, this means there's no change as far as overhead allocated to CBs and TJs. For quality control, the driver um, is the number of inspections, far more inspections for CB than TJ, so the driver will tend to increase the overhead charge to CB and reduce the overhead charge to TJ. The uh, production setup costs uh, are charged out on the basis of the number of setups. The CB is produced in four large runs, whereas the TJ is produced 12 times a year. So the driver will increase the overhead charge to the TJ and reduce the overhead charge to the CB. And then this final paragraph. As property costs leave the overhead allocation unchanged, this means 75% of the cost is left exactly as it was. Inspections are 23% of the overhead. As the CB require more inspections, the increase in the overhead per unit can be attributed to the inspections. Quite important. That's, that's telling the examiner where the crux has come from. And the fact that TJ needs more setups is less significant because setups only make up 23% of the total overhead. So what do we do? We had three sentences basically in each paragraph. We told the examiner what the driver was, fine. We'd already been told that in the question, but then we took it further. We, we explained the facts of how the driver is different between the two products, or in the case of the, um, the, the, the property costs, how it's the same. And then the significance that this has for the overhead cost of each product. And then the final paragraph will actually have four sentences outlining the relative importance of them, and then stating clearly which overhead is principally responsible for the overhead cost being different between the two different units. Now, part B and part C, we've read the question. I know both are the same, with one exception, that the overhead absorption for B needs to be based on a, a overhead absorption using the traditional approach, and for C, using ABC. So I can slightly reallocate my time, just so that I, I calculate the direct costs all within part B and then use that information a second time to answer part C. Straight in with part, part B and we, we, we know that the, um, the inputs are being charged out uh, based on uh, litres and uh, based on kilograms and so on. So we, we simply put the inputs in the same format so 0 0.4 is the uh, equivalent of 400 uh, grams. And then we've got two, $2 per, um, per kilogram for, for, the, for, for, for the paper and so on. And it's similar for the ink, similar for the machine time. And we very quickly generate the direct cost in both areas. And we can see that these, uh, certainly for the print, printing ink and machine time, we've got the same figures. And, within your exam, you can have this uh, replication of the, the value quite quickly by, by, by using the, the uh, equals and the, the, the cell that it's equal to, and just saving you time. Then we need to work out the overhead absorption rate. Well, we know what the total overhead cost is because it's given to us. We have to work out the machine hours. Well, we know that there's a hundred, well, there's a million uh, of the CBs, and that each requires 0 0.1 hours. So it's going to need 100,000 hours, and we know that we need to produce 120,000 uh, TJs. Well, there's they produce six an hour, so that's 0 0.16 per unit, 
and that works out to 20,000 hours. Adding them together gives us 120,000 hours in total for the total machine hours and we divide the total overhead cost by that to give us the overhead absorption rate of $24 per machine hour. We are then able to uh, absorb that using the machine hour basis, 0.1 hours or uh, six minutes for a CD and 0.1, well, a sixth of an hour for the TJ. So multiplying them up by 24 gives us the $2.40 and $4. Adding them on gives us the cost per unit. We must remember that the question is asked us not just for cost per unit but also for the margin. So the price minus cost per unit gives us the margin. And in, in both cases we've got a margin of $3.40. That's the whole lot all on one slide. So it's just a repetition of what we've just seen on the previous slides. Then we're looking at uh, part C, which is the, um, the the overhead charge using the ABC approach. So setting up the cost pools for property quality and setups, then uh, using the drivers, and this enables us to identify a charge out rate. We know that the property um, is 100,000 for the, the CB, 20,000 for yeah, TJ. So we're able to multiply them up and put them into the respective products. Then we're able to add up those those columns so that we're able to see the total overhead for the, the CB, 2.4 million, and the total overhead for TJ, 0.4 million. And then we divide them by the number of units that we're going to produce to give us an overhead cost per unit. And if we add that on to the direct cost, that gives the total cost. That gives the price, and then we deduct that from the price to give us the margin. And we've done the same again as we did in part B. Thank you very much for watching, and by all means, watch it over and over again. But I, I, I think that this ought to be able to help you with your ABC and your preparation for the uh, forthcoming performance management exam. Thank you, and goodbye.